Hmm. In today's episode, we're sculpting, uh, something. Uh, not sure what yet, but we'll, we'll figure it out. I know we're carving this into this, though. We'll show you what we're doing. Measure some success, remove unnecessary services, and get the city positioned for future growth. Looking for top five entertainment for the next 30 minutes? Then park it right, uh, then park it right. Ah, oh, come on. Well, just stick around. Hey, hey, good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, City Sculptor, and you have made your way back to Pangasus Bay. Hey, it's great to have you back. It's great to be back, too. And we are looking out across the, the Ocean's Gate Channel Crossing. You can see the ship kind of making its way through Ocean's Gate there on its way out westbound out of town. And we're looking across the beautiful Pangasus Bay. As you recall, the subject of our last episode was kind of a cliffhanger. Do we stay or do we go? And I can share with you the, the results of our poll. This was a couple weeks ago now. The overwhelming majority of us uh, voted in favor of saving Pangasus Bay. And so I just want to say, first of all, thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your ideas, your thoughts. Thank you for sharing with me. It's, uh, you know, it, it's just, it means a lot to me to know that we've got such a great community that's building and growing here. And, and, and you guys and gals have a lot to say and really help me with the direction of that build. So uh, again, once again, thank you. So let's continue on our journey. Yay, Pangasus Bay gets to live for another day. <laughs> All right. So there were a couple things that I noticed along the way. We had some serious economic issues and I'll pull this out of cinematic mode real quick. Like, and you see down here, we're losing at about $800,000 an hour. And we still have a lot of these buildings that are turned off. As you recall from the, the last episode, we were showing that we had a massive deficit, monthly balance deficit here. We're going to start tackling those things today. There were a couple of tips and tricks that I learned along the way that should help us in that regard. And the first one uh, was was pointed out by Picana on, on our channel. There were a couple others that also mentioned this too, and I just didn't fully understand the context. But just bump the office tax rate to 30 max, max 30% for an in-game month. Once you bring it back down, they'll move back in and the office should fill back up and work as intended. So I'm, uh, I did a little, little uh, research on that and I found City Planner Plays video, his paper mill complex video. If you haven't had a chance to check that out, go check it out. Uh, another great episode by CPP. And he mentions early on in the episode that um, there was a, a, a fix that was posted on the Paradox forums. So I went and checked that out a little bit. And sure enough, yes, um, kind of a workaround here. So I, the, the intent is to deploy that fix in uh, Pangasus Bay to see if we can get the office um, jumpstart, if you will, the, the office tax revenue for the city. Hopefully that'll go a long ways to solving our little deficit shortage there. And then uh, after that, we can take some additional steps. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to diving back in. I love this city. Uh, I love the journey that we've we've taken so far. Looking forward to more on this journey. And, uh, you know, it, it, today, it, it's, it all starts today. So, all right, I just threw a lot at you guys. So with all that as a backdrop, let's do this. Let's jump in and try that office income trick now. Okay, so you're looking at uh, you know Roughneck Isle down here in the foreground and across Pangasus Bay. We kind of decided to change the angle a little bit here. And I want to hit escape here, jump into our city economy tab, and then jump into taxation. And then I want to set that office taxation rate all the way up to the max. I want to bring that all the way up to 30%. And uh, before I do that, here, let's let's just jump back here. It was at 12%. You can see we were bringing in about $1.5 million in uh, in tax revenue in that in that segment. Uh, and then, you know, it's a total estimated total of $13.9 million for all of our taxation across all of our different, uh, you know, different types, residential, commercial, industrial, and office. So let's bring that up to 30% now. And uh, we're going to let that play out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, fast forward here. We're to zip forward one, two. I'm going to put it on 3x speed and I'm going to let the game just kind of run. We're just going to let it run for, well, however long it takes. And the idea is that this 30% tax rate will eventually drive out all of our offices and bring this tax level down to zero. And when that happens, then we will pivot and bring that tax rate back down to 10% and everybody will come flooding back in. And so hopefully the net effect is that we might have a much higher tax base, a total tax base. All right, we're gonna let that play out, so sit tight.
Okay, now you can see that our tax revenue for office has gone to zero. We finally hit the bottom point here with our ta tax rate sitting at 30%. It looks like um, all of the office businesses have moved out of the city and we're no longer connect collecting any tax revenue. So now what we're going to do is we're going to readjust that. We're going to bring that back down to uh, let's let's have it go to 10 percent. And we're going to try and work on getting those offices to repopulate now. And that should have a, an impact on our tax revenues as we continue to move forward through time. So, all right, sit tight. We're going to let the game run on uh, fast forward again for a little bit. All right, welcome back. And, you know, I've let the game run for quite a bit now. You can see down here in the bottom, it's March of 2043. The time is 1021 p.m. You saw our, our tax base that would continue to grow. And I'm going to bring open the city economy tab over here and then jump into taxation. And you can see that we started out, I think we started out with an office tax base of 1.5 million. And then, of course, we ran everything up to a 30% tax rate, chased all the businesses out of town, and then turned around and invited them back at a much more attractive rate of 10%. And you can see that that's generating almost $5 million a month now. And, and that number continues to kind of just tick up. And this is great, which results in a uh, which results in a total tax take of just under $15 million. Now that's going a long ways to help help us address our budget problems, but it's not going to do the whole trick. So, so let's take a look here. Um, our monthly balance still has us sitting about 15 point, let's call it 15.8 million dollars in the hole. So we still have a long ways to go. Again, the big chunk of that, look at this, is tile upkeep. 18.6 million dollars per month that we're paying in tile upkeep. And as you can see, that, that thicker bar here, it almost equ equates to our entire uh, revenue stream here in the city. Now, We've got some things that we can continue to do. And what I'd like to do is, is kind of our next step is to start diving in and eliminating a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of the buildings that we've already powered down. There were a couple comments that, that told us that, uh, you know, a couple of viewers that commented and told us, hey, instead of just powering those down, you should eliminate those entirely. And I, and I tend to agree with them. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jump through and I'm gonna start, uh, I'm gonna start eliminating a lot of those. The ones that are really truly duplicative and um, and, and really causing us to, to have some huge, huge financial burdens on the city. Again, those service upkeeps, you look at that, it's 6.8, $16.8 million that we're paying per month in service upkeeps. I think we can bring that down quite a bit. And then the services that remain, I think we can probably, I think we can figure out a way to increase some of those service fees. And as you can see down here in our in our breakout, well, if I, if I just, can I click on that? No, I can't, I have to hover over it. But you can see parking fees, electricity fees, water fees, garbage fees. I can mess around with a lot of those those fees and trying to try to raise a little bit more, a little bit more revenue out of some of those fees as well and then continue to play with our taxes as well. Uh, and then service trade, you know, we're exporting electricity to the tune of about a half a million dollars a month, exporting water to the tune of $16,000 a month, which is not much, not much. But, um, you know, these are things that, that can really help us along the way too. Just every little bit counts. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start playing around with those. Uh, and, and I should say, uh, playing around with, with removing, wow, we're over $5 million now in office revenue. Wow. Okay. We're going to start removing some of those extra buildings. So why don't you sit tight while I get to work on that.
All right, welcome back. And after the little time lapse that you saw there, we had a number of changes that we made. Now, one of the things you probably saw me do here is I would pop open my little information view tab here and just kind of get a feel for where things were. Like, for example, the healthcare and death care. I wanted to see where I was. I think we had a huge capacity at one point of Oh, somewhere in the, you know, around 2000. And then I brought that back down to 725. And then crematorium, I expanded that up just a little bit. Cemetery, obviously we have tremendous cemetery capacity just because of the big, you know, mo monumental cemetery that we have up at the airport. But I wanted to go through each of these tabs and just make sure that I was touching on each one of these uh, major ones because those would line up really, really well with our services tab down here in our city economy. If I go to services, you can see where a bulk of our uh, our expenses are. Roads, 1.1 million. Electricity, water, sewage, health care, and death care. This is one I wanted to point out. This one, when I started this whole time lapse, was about two, 2.1 million, somewhere in that range. Now you see we've got it down to about 1.6 million. And then education and research, this was north of 3 million. Uh, and then a couple other ones I want to point out. Transportation, I think, was north of 2 million. Parks and Rec uh, is still a really, really big number, and that's primarily driven just by the fact that I have put parks <laughs> and, in, and, you know, kind of recreation, tennis courts, basketball courts, and so forth, all throughout the city, we could go through strategically and eliminate a lot of those to really bring this back in line. The bottom line is this, our monthly balance is still sitting down pretty low here. We're still in the negatives. We're still running about a 12, 12 and a half million dollar a month uh, deficit. And the other tab I want to show you guys is taxation. As you recall, when we started this whole episode, the office taxation was coming in at about 1.5 million. Look at this, huge, huge improvement. And by setting that tax rate at 10%, we are, are now really bringing in a lot of money into the city's coffers. And additionally, the commercial, I brought that down to 10%, and this jumped up as well. So we're starting to get some movement in the right direction. Uh, and, and our estimated total revenue now is, is almost 19 million. As you recall, when we started off, it was about 14 and a half million. So, we're making tremendous progress towards our budget here. And then you can still see here our tile upkeep. That hasn't changed. It's still about 18 million. Uh, and and you know, the difference is that the big changes again are the revenues that are now sitting at 23 million. Now, as you recall, 23 million, we were close to around the same as our tile upkeep before. It was, it was around 18 and a half in total. Now it's 23 and a half. And then our, our service upkeeps, they have come down a little bit, just a little bit. And the reason that they didn't come down more is because in our services tab, back when Economy 2.0 had launched, I had taken all of these tabs and I had changed our budgets downwards in all of them just to try and free up some extra dollars. Uh, and, and I've come back in and I've reset those all back to 100. So we're at 100% for all of our services throughout the city, uh, including Parks and Rec. And, uh, that, you know, I think there was a little bit of a trade off. There was a little bit of an offset. We eliminated a lot of those, but then we came back and put the uh, put the budget back at 100 percent. And so was the, the result was kind of a, a trade off in this space. Now, again, I'd like to come back through and try and trim some of the fat out of some of these areas as well. But I think, uh, you know, that's a good, healthy start. Now, there are a couple other things I want to try to specifically one that was raised by Nama and she is the creator, if you will, of the Pine Harbor County series. You should go check that one out on her channel. Uh, and she mentioned that uh, her unemployment rate in the city was very, very high. And if you can see down here below, our industrial demand is still just pegged. Uh, it's it, there's a lot of industrial demand in the city here. And if I jump over into our population and bring that up, our unemployment rate is still around 18.2%. So we have room to improve in that area as well. And I think in our next episode, if I come in and I you know, focus on building out an industrial space, that's gonna also help us close the gap. Now, you can see there are still a number of buildings that are toggled off. I've got a tennis court that's deactivated here. Of course, our entire sports complex is, is almost entirely toggled off as well. We've got some work to do in that space. By and large, I think we're making really good progress. Oh, another one I toggled off over here. Let's take a spin over here. It's this massive, massive industrial waste processing site. Such a cool asset. I love it sitting down here at the at the entrance to our mining pit. But this total uh, dollar upkeep was in the hundreds of thousands per month, and um, I just figured let's turn that off. It's a, it's a great via, uh, great building because it allows you to do trash processing to the tune of 250 vehicles, but just overkill for the city. And you're seeing a lot of ambulance calls go up uh, across the city as well. You can see those dotted in there. 
That's because I had reduced the overall health care coverage in the city by re- you know, eliminating a hospital, or actually two hospitals, uh, substituting in with some medical clinics. And then I, I downgraded some of the existing medical clinics into small medical clinics. So uh, you're going to see probably a little bit of a gap in coverage for, for right now, but I will you know, come back in and dot that back in. Um, you know, as the city shakes out a little bit more. So the next thing I want to try is do a little, uh, I want to do a little bit of industrial densification. And what I mean by that is you can see on the east side of town here, we've got this massive mining era operation here called Blacksmith's Rise. And we've got some industry that's kind of skirting along the uh, kind of the edge of it, if you will. Now, the good news is, again, this all blows the pollution off the map here. If I go to air pollution, this one, you can see the wind direction is blowing everything off the map. So we don't have to worry about if we put in industry in this space, anything getting uh, polluted or certainly making an uncomfortable living arrangement for our residents of Pangasus Bay. So I'd like to take the opportunity to do that. Now, you can see up on this ridge here, I dotted in just a couple little buildings. And I think actually it works pretty nicely just for effect. And the reason I, the way I did that, I should say, is I just grabbed this little commercial zone, did a little two by two and up popped a little building there. And so if I take a moment and just kind of make my way around this, this mining pit here and drop in a couple of these little two by two buildings here and there, just for effect, I think what it's going to do is it's going to create this, um, you know, this industrial look and also gives us the opportunity to add industry into our, you know, into our build without having to do a full blown industry design. And uh, so let's just do that real quick. Like, Yeah, take a look at that. I've got all these little buildings that kind of now sit up along this ridge line. If you kind of step back a little bit, it just gives this uh, appearance of a little bit more going on around these mining pits while providing jobs. And this isn't a lot of jobs. It's, uh, what do we got to, uh, oh, it doesn't show, it doesn't show how many jobs. Well, it's, a, it's jobs. <laughs> and we've got this truck that's making its way down through here now. And so you get the activity going on in the mining pit a little bit more. Same thing over here. We just kind of dotted a few of those in right up along that ridge line here. They're still starting to build in. Now, there are other ways we can uh, really improve the density in this area too. I can come back in, in little corners like this and just drop in maybe a little road that follows right along this railroad track. And then I can drop in some larger industry buildings right down in here. So maybe a nice, I don't know, four by six. Oh, look at that, three by three by three. That looks cool. And uh, you know, we'll just we'll just pop in one here, maybe a couple here. Again, a larger one down here at the end. And uh, yeah, maybe some two by twos right here, here, and here. Again, nothing fancy, nothing too uh, too detailed. It's just a. Uh, a densification project. Now, continuing along in that theme, we already started down here along the railroad tracks. We did this uh, long, you know, quite a while ago when we built out Blacksmith's Rise, and I think we can continue this theme right down along this little notch here that makes its way between this railroad track and this long service road, and then continuing down along into this space here. Here we've got another parking lot that we don't need right there, and then if we take that out, I think we could build a nice little industrial park right back in here. Again, nothing fancy. Just, uh, you know, just with the purpose of, of really adding some density in this space. There, now we've got a bunch more industry in place here. And, and take a look here. I just extended this industrial line just kind of right along here. And also we got our first little taste of the surface painter. <laughs> ah, that's kind of fun. Oh, hi. Oh, the police. Look at that. The long arm of the law coming to check things out. Kind of a rough neighborhood. Probably smart to have a good police presence. So we touched a little bit with the surface painter there. I've got a lot of work to do to learn how to do that. But look at all this industry that filled down in here along this trail, this train track. And then also, as you come over into this space, you've got this big incineration plant. And look at all of the little, um, looks like crude oil tanks that have come in here. I really like the looks of those. Those are kind of cool. And I think they fit in really naturally in this space. So uh, what's what's you know occurred here now is we've got 
a nice little dent taken out of our industrial demand. And uh, we're starting to fill in here without having to do a major rebuild in this space. I think we've got a long ways to go in terms of industry, but it at least is starting to point us in the right direction. And again, if we check in on our city economy, you can see, uh, let's jump to our taxation. Now we're sitting at almost $21 million in, in tax revenues um, with, with all of these ma major changes that we've made. And our budget's getting closer to alignment. Remember, we started with a negative balance of about $18 million. We're now down to about $10 million. I think we can continue to close this gap. So, uh, I, you know, this is probably a good place for us to kind of uh, you know, take a pause and reflect on everything that we've done, and then maybe set ourselves up for our, you know, our next episode next week. But a couple of things to point out: like I said, we brought in a lot more tax revenue. Uh, we've also uh, expanded our population quite a bit. Now, back at the beginning of the episode, I want to say I was in the low to mid 90s uh, in terms of uh, in terms of population. Now we're well over 100,000 here, 101,000, which is just great news. And you can see our demand bars over here. The industrial demand still could use a little industry, but lots more opportunity for us to expand in our residential area as well. I'm probably going to want to come in here even and, and noodle around with the tax rates with the residential and industrial going forward. In fact, let's just go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to take that industrial down to 10% and I'm going to take our residential down to 10% too. Now, of course, this is going to have a massive impact on our uh, estimated tax take, but we can still um, you know, bring in almost $20 million in tax revenue. And I think these numbers will creep back up as we move forward through time as the city becomes more desirable for people to move into. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. This one was a lot of fun. It's really taxing my brain. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of work to do still in the city here, but I'm looking forward to kind of pushing through all of this maintenance and all of this rework to get to a point where we can start building some really fun and creative things again. And I hope you guys are looking forward to that as well. Now, just as a reminder, we are a growing channel. Thanks to your support. Really do appreciate your support. And now I'm happy to say that we've jumped over the 12,000 subscriber mark. Wow, this is just uh, this is just a fantastic, uh, you know, fantastic story and a fantastic journey. I'm happy to have you guys along with me on this ride. And uh, if you're looking to throw some additional support behind the channel so that we can bring you even more expanded content, we now have our Patreon page, of course. And I thank you so much for those of you who have already signed up. We also have membership options here on YouTube. Now, so while you're at it, make sure to chip away at that like button and hammer that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the happenings here in Pangasas Bay and our Grand Vanillica series as well. All right, well, with that, I'm going to bid you guys a fond farewell. And until next time, good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs>